You'd think that professional basketball players would always have the best technique for playing the game. Most do, but a surprising number do not. Despite being paid millions of dollars to compete against the world's best, some NBA players still struggle with basic fundamentals, and nothing is more fundamental than shooting the basketball. Here are some of the ugliest shooting forms ever witnessed in the NBA. Sean Marion Sean Marion is an NBA champion and a four-time All-Star. He played for five different teams and had a career lasting over 15 years. As NBA players go, Marion is one of the more successful and memorable. However, just as memorable as anything else is his unbelievably weird way of shooting the basketball. Nobody knows for sure who taught Marion to shoot or why he continued to shoot that way. That being said, there's a theory that Marion's unique form developed from the fact that his left pinky finger is permanently bent. Marion says this probably resulted from the finger being dislocated several times as a child, but even he doesn't know for sure. Marion grew up in Illinois and moved to Tennessee in high school. He played at Clarksville High School and was nominated to play in the McDonald's All-American game. He also won MVP honors in his senior year and led the Clarksville Wildcats to the final eight in their division. Like many future NBA players, it was obvious from the beginning that Sean Marion was a special talent. It must have driven his early coaches crazy that he couldn't alter his shooting form. Even though Marion averaged 26 points in his senior year of high school, his coaches and teammates must have felt that he would score even more if he could nail the correct shooting technique. But Marion never did. He went on to play NCAA ball at the University of Nevada in Las Vegas, and in 1999, he declared for the NBA draft. Marion was picked by the Phoenix Suns in the first round, and it was with Phoenix that he would spend the bulk of his career. Alongside Steve Nash and Amari Stoudemire, Sean Marion was one of the Suns' starting five during their back-to-back -back conference finals appearances in 2005 and 2006. In other words, he was one of the best players on one of the best teams in the NBA. This made his horrible shooting form even more amazing. Believe it or not, during Phoenix's prime, Marion shot over 50% from the field and well over 30% from three-point range. For multiple years in a row, that's pretty damn good. Marion eventually left Phoenix in 2008, and in 2011, he won an NBA championship with the Dallas Mavericks. He eventually retired in 2015, but his one-of-a-kind shooting form will live on in NBA folklore for decades to come. Michael Kidd Gilchrist Another player who made it to the NBA despite lousy form is Michael Kidd Gilchrist. Unlike Sean Marion, though, Gilchrist was unlucky in the draft. He was selected by the Charlotte Bobcats in 2012, placing him on what many believe to be the worst team in NBA history. Gilchrist spent almost 10 years with the team. During the 2014-2015 season, the team changed their name to the Hornets, but this did little to fix their woes. Even though Gilchrist's career has been plagued by injury, he managed to be one of the best players on Charlotte's roster. That really isn't saying all that much though. The team never won a playoff series for the entirety of Gilchrist's time there. Sadly, the most memorable part of his career may be in fact his ugly shooting form. Gilchrist's technique was less obviously weird than Marion's. Just watching on TV, you might not even notice anything too out of the ordinary, other than the fact that he seems to hang in the air for longer than usual. But hit the shot from the right angle and you'll recognize an abomination. For some unknown reason, Gilchrist bends his elbow at a painful looking angle. This looks more like a circus performance than a basketball shot. It is a total mystery where he learned to shoot this way. In fact, it's also a total mystery how he even does it in the first place. The next time you're holding a basketball, try bending your arm like this and see where the ball ends up when you release it. But trust me, don't try it indoors or around anything valuable. There's almost no way you could angle your arm to give you less control over the direction of your shot. Yet, for Michael Kidd Gilchrist, not only was this possible, it was the only way he could manage to shoot. As you can see, despite the best efforts of the Charlotte coaching staff, Gilchrist simply could not be trained to shoot any other way. And in the gym, at least, it seemed to be working pretty well somehow. It's a shame Gilchrist has never made it to a decent team. This makes his head-turning shooting form much more of a defining feature, whereas with players like Sean Marion, it's easier to forget. Hopefully playing on the world stage and earning millions of dollars a year has been worth it for Michael Kidd Gilchrist, even if the thing he's most known for is his ugly shooting form. Ronnie Brewer both players we've covered so far have been guys who shoot well despite bad form. Well, the same can't be said for Ronnie Brewer. Brewer's shooting form looks terrible and doesn't work. During eight years of professional basketball, Brewer has shot below 50% from the field and below 70% from the free throw line. Weirdly, his numbers have been pretty much the same in both the playoffs and the regular season. Brewer has ice in his veins. No matter the pressure, he's consistent. He caught special attention during the 2013-2014 season, which he spent with the Houston Rockets. During that season, Brewer's shooting became the stuff legends are made of. Although he had been consistently mediocre in years prior, 
This time, Brewer went off the rails. He shot just 20% from the field and 13% from beyond the arc. This amazed fans, but what really shocked the world was Brewer's free throw shooting. In the 2013-2014 season, Ronnie Brewer's free throw percentage was zero. Now, in case you're wondering, that isn't because Brewer just didn't shoot any free throws. He did. Here's a clip of him attempting a pair during the historic season. We'll miss the free throw. He was his fourth team in three years. His dad played six different NBA teams, so they both know the roadmap. That's a bad looking free throw. It's one thing to have bad shooting form, but make it work. It's another thing to have bad shooting form and experience bad results. Ronnie Brewer definitely did both, but in his defense, it isn't his fault. According to Brewer, he broke his arm on a water slide when he was 10 years old. Ever since then, he's been unable to raise his arms above his head. Of course, this is a tragic accident and the fact that Brewer made it all the way to the NBA is admirable. But to be honest, it's also confusing. Why did he make it to the NBA? Raising your arms above your head is a really important thing to be able to do in basketball. If Brewer had managed to score at a decent percentage, that would be one thing. But he didn't. Brewer last played for the Warriors G League team in Santa Cruz. It's unknown what his plans are moving forward. Andres Beadrins. Speaking of the Warriors and speaking of disturbing free throw shooting, meet Andres Beadrins. Beadrins is originally from Latvia and he played with the Golden State Warriors from 2004 until 2013. He played one more season with the Utah Jazz before retiring in 2014, spending the majority of his career in Golden State during a time when they were still one of the worst teams in the league. Beadrins still managed to make a name for himself in one particular way. He was the worst free throw shooter anyone had ever seen. Watching Beadrins at the line, you notice he shoots the ball left-handed. That's because he is left-handed, but somehow he looks a lot like someone who isn't left-handed trying to shoot lefty just for fun. Only it wasn't fun at all. The struggling Warriors were tortured by his awful shooting. In 2012, the seven-footer shot just 11% from the free throw line. While Ronnie Brewer might have been jealous, it's important to remember that unlike Brewer, Beadrins was being sent to the line pretty often. As a starting center, Beadrin spent much of his time with the Warriors getting hacked and then making roughly one out of every 10 free throw attempts. If there was a Hall of Famer for poor free throw shooting, Andres Beadrin would definitely be in it. He did once, somehow, make both his free throws during a game against the Denver Nuggets in 2013. It was a home game for the Warriors and the fans reacted to the shocking event by, well, listen for yourself. Man, that's great by the Warrior fans there. Isn't that nice? It's really good. Pandemonium is about the only word to describe it. Sadly, this was probably the highlight of Beadrin's career. But then again, even though he left before the dynasty, he was a key player on the infamous We Believe Warriors in 2007. Joakim Noah Joakim Noah spent most of his professional career with the Chicago Bulls. He also played with the Knicks, the Grizzlies, and the Clippers before retiring in 2020. But wherever Noah played, he had one of the wackiest shooting forms you can imagine. Unlike some of the other players on this list, Noah's shooting didn't stand out from any particular area of the court. Wherever he was shooting, the free throw line, the three point line, close range, mid range, you name it, his form was just unwatchable. In fact, it has been a subject of speculation what exactly he was really even doing. Was he pushing the ball with both hands? Was one hand pushing more than the other? Did the ball have side spin instead of back spin? All of these are scary questions. It doesn't help that Noah was unpredictable at best when it came to his shooting. His career free throw percentage was 70%. Not bad, but not great either. His field goal percentage was close to 50%, which is better, but keep in mind that as a big man, much of Noah's scoring was under the rim. From anywhere beyond close range, defense had no interest in Noah's whereabouts. He was invited by opponents to take jump shots, and when he did, it was often a brutal mistake. Despite his slightly embarrassing reputation as a shooter, Noah still managed to have a fairly successful career. He made the All-Star team twice, and in 2014, he was named the NBA's Defensive Player of the Year. He also had a very successful career in college, playing for the Florida Gators. Noah won two NCAA titles with the Gators and was named Most Outstanding Player in 2006. Shaquille O'Neal This is probably the most famous and best player on this entire list. While Shaq's poor free throw shooting is something the Hall of Famer will probably never live down, many have forgotten just how plain ugly it was too. 
What makes Shaq so interesting is the fact that his struggles from the line was clearly an issue of strength. To understand just how hard it was for Shaq to make free throws, you have to understand how truly large this man actually is. The world you and I live in is just not built for somebody like him. Shaquille O'Neal is 7 feet 1 inches tall, a height he shares with only a few thousand other people alive on earth today. During his career, he weighed somewhere around 350 pounds. Shaq wears a size 23 shoe and his hands are 12 inches across. Holding the basketball for Shaq is like holding a tennis ball for somebody else. Shooting the free throw is like throwing that tennis ball across the dinner table into a wine glass. It's just too delicate. While Shaq was great at slam dunks and rebounds, the finesse needed to make free throws was something that he just physically did not possess. And in trying, he would do some impressively ugly highlights. Shaq finished his career with four NBA titles, three finals MVP awards, a regular season MVP award, and a whopping 15 all-star appearances. Despite all that, most people estimate that his list of accolades would be significantly greater if he hadn't been so terrible from the line. Chuck Hayes When it comes to straight up ugly shooting form, Chuck Hayes is tough to beat. A video of him at the free throw line went viral back in 2007 for reasons that are obvious when you watch it. Hayes is unique in that he actually confused his opponents with his bizarre technique. For example, the Utah Jazz were completely fooled and walked right into the paint before he had actually released the ball. Technically, this was a foul on the Jazz, so it would be a clever trick to get more free throws if he was doing it on purpose and if he could actually make free throws consistently in the first place. In 2008, Hayes shot just 46% from the line. In 2009, he shot a grim 38%. While that was definitely the low point of his career, Hayes retired in 2015 with an all-time percentage of 62%, way below the NBA average. Looking over this list, it's not hard to wonder how are these shooting problems even possible? We're talking about professional basketball players, the best of the best. Incredibly talented players still fail every year to make the cut. How did Ronnie Brewer make it to the NBA when he can't raise his arms above his head and can't shoot well? How did Shaq, one of the most dominant players in history, not figure out how to fix the critical weakness of his free throw shooting? How did nobody tell Joe Kim Noah to shoot with one arm instead of two? We'd love to hear what you think. Which shooting form do you think is the ugliest? Let us know in the comments below.